Fans back this week. Tottenham Hotspur booed off by their returning supporters as Harry Kane's uh, potential farewell ended in disappointing fashion. Back page of The Sun today says that's all chokes as Tottenham went 1-0 up, ended up losing by two goals to one. Sergi Regulon with an own goal and then not a particularly great challenge uh, to give the ball away and funnel it into the path of Ollie Watkins, who maybe should have had a penalty as well in that game. Uh, Spurs fans waited for over an hour afterwards to um, get involved and celebrate with the support uh, the, the players or just to sort of have a bit of contact with the players that they hadn't seen for almost a year. They were promised a lap of honour. They eventually came out later than planned because some of the supporters refused to leave the stadium until they did. I got a text last night from a Tottenham fan. They were furious. I mean, they lit up the, the talk sport switchboard, Simon, like Blackpool Illuminations last night, mm-hmm. the Tottenham fans. They were furious. Uh, this text from a Tottenham fan last night said, end of the Spurs game was so bad, we literally waited 35 minutes at full time for them to come out and just give us a wave. Then the players were obviously sent back out. It was so awkward. The announcer was telling everybody to go home. We always have a parade around the pitch after the last home game of the season. And never more was it more important than last night. There were clashes with stewards because fans were upset. The fans were stuck high up away uh, from the pitch as far as possible. 60 quid they'd played for the privilege to go and watch their team lose to Aston Villa. It was a rubbish performance. They furloughed staff in the last 12 months. They joined the ESL, then had to quit that. Failure to build on the Champions League final success of a couple of years ago in the era of Poch. Levy wrote an open letter yesterday to all the Tottenham fans. We've lost focus of what our DNA is, he said. You're absolutely right, fella. You really have. Disgraceful yesterday. They've got to get their house in order because not only are they going to lose Harry Kane, but they're losing a lot of goodwill as well, Simon. Um, look, I mean, I don't know what the ticket pricing is normally at Spurs. If it's normally 60 quid, then it's 60 quid. If it's more than 60 quid, then if it's less than 60 quid, then Spurs have profited and gone down a train of thought which is not valuing the fans. But I suspect that's probably not the case. The players are not coming out. Well, that's got nothing to do with the ownership of the football club. That's got to do with the players. The players are the the ones that are supposed to be desperately craving the contact with the fans that have missed them so much. So why in God's name they need to be dragged out with a shepherd's crook to come out and and wave to their fans on the last game of the season, which which is tradition at every single football club, from the Premier League down to to non-league football, is beyond me. The you know you look at the ESL you, you're arguing about the furlough well they weren't the only football club that talked about furloughing the, uh, the uh, support staff and the main reason behind that Daniel Levy wanted to do it and John Henry wanted to do it is because they wanted to bring the players into play about how player pay cuts should be brought to the fore. Yeah, it's and another they, example of being out of touch. Isn't well, it? is it? Well, yeah, I know it's out of touch, Sam. But so when you so when you're Costa Coffee right and you're making millions and millions of pounds which most of these football clubs are not making you can furlough your staff but a football club can't. It's nonsense. But I've got no loyalty. I've got no loyalty. To- I understand, I understand the tribalistic argument about. I understand the tribalistic argument that people can make, and I'm not defending Daniel Levy in any shape or form. I'm just trying to give a balanced, nuanced argument back at the points that you've raised. I, I Top- think if you go to a football game after not being able to go for it for 12 months, yep. you don't expect to be stuck up in the gods, pay 60 pounds, and the reason you're stuck up in the gods is because they don't want to move the advertising canvases or the big canvases that they've put down in the bottom. That tier. may be the case, and Sam. you expect and to be treated with a little bit of respect. I can't I speak to that because if that was the case, if that was the reasons why they were put up in the gods in this wonderful £1 billion stadium that everyone was raving about and everyone would take a seat in it wherever they could get one because it's such a fantastic stadium. Now they're stuck up in the gods. But they've got beat. If Tottenham had put on a decent performance yesterday and and gone out with something vaguely resembling some credibility, i.e. winning the last home game of the season and sending their fans off with a happy smile on their face, we might be having a different discussion. The fact they stunk the place out the players have let the fans down on the on that particular game, and it kind of compounds the issue that's amongst Tottenham, which the team isn't good enough. The team isn't good enough under Jose Mourinho, and it also won't be good enough enough, enough under a twelve year old manager. And we get to the stage where Tottenham, uh, you know, are, are are in this state of flux. They don't have a manager. It's a little bit messy at this moment in time. The Harry Kane scenario is being overtaken or being taken over with the narrative that he's going to force his way out of the football club and he's entitled to do as he pleases and so on and so forth. So all in all, it's a, it's a very dysfunctional moment in time and it's compounded by a group of players that go out there and play like that. Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.